Now, one of the first things in teachers and lecturers tend to mention when they're talking about radioactive decay, is they say the process is entirely random. So if you heat the atoms up or cool them down really low, you won't be able to alter the rate of decay. But might there be some other way we can mess with them a little bit to alter the rate of decay, at least sort of. Now, even though radioactive elements decay randomly, if you get enough of them together, they can form a pattern in their rate of decay, what's commonly known as their half-life, which we did cover in an older video. Now, if you take a relatively rare radioactive isotope like thorium-224, it has a half-life of just over one second. This half-life doesn't mean you can predict anything about a single atom of thorium-224. However, what it does mean is if you take four million atoms of thorium-224, after one second, half of them have decayed, you will only have two million atoms of thorium-224. And after two seconds, you'll have approximately one million atoms of thorium-224, and so on. So if you select an individual atom of thorium-224, it's very likely that after one minute, it will have decayed. But there's no certainty we've done so. In fact, even after an hour has passed, there's still a very remote chance that it hasn't decayed. In fact, about that same chance as if you tossed a coin 3,600 times, you come up heads each and every time. That's about the same odds. So you could envision it like each atom of thorium-224 is tossing a coin. As each second ticks by, tosses a coin, heads doesn't decay, tails it does. So you alter the atom in any way, you can't alter the rate of decay. But it might be possible to alter how frequently the coin is tossed, at least to an outside observer. If we continue with the coin tossing analogy, this does mean if you put some thorium-224 on a spaceship, traveling near the speed of light, time will appear to slow down for thorium. In turn, slow down the rate of coin tossing. So to an external observer, the rate of decay of thorium appears to slow down as you approach the speed of light. Now, if you put two identical masses of thorium-224 or some other radioactive isotope on two separate spaceships, send one away near the speed of light and return it to the same spot at the same speed, an apparent shorter length of time will have passed on the second ship, so fewer coins would have been tossed on the moving ship as a result fewer atoms of thorium-224 will have decayed on the moving vessel. Now this time dilation effect wouldn't alter how anyone inside the second ship would perceive the rate of decay of thorium-224, as they would also be experiencing the slowing down of time as they approach the speed of light. Now whilst this is an interesting curiosity, what real-world impact might it actually have? Well currently, some of the power of space vehicles divided by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, often powered by plutonium-238 rather than thorium. Plutonium decays, produces heat, and the heat difference between the plutonium and space is it generate electricity without the need for any moving parts. This in turn means it can generate electricity on the spaceship without need for any moving parts, which would break down on a long journey. It's reliable and predictable source of power can then be used to supply electricity to all the instruments on the craft. Now, so none of the spacecraft we currently have in operation, or even in the planning phase, will travel fast enough to experience enough of a time dilation to be concerned about altering the rate of decay. But if we ever do have ships travelling to other stars, we'll need to approach the speed of light and reliably powering the craft may then become an issue. Then we may also have to factor in how much of an isotope will be required, which in turn will depend on how fast the vessel is going and for how long. So that's how the half-life may be able to vary, at least sort of.